is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you sow to the flesh of the flesh, you'll reap corruption. But if you sow to the spirit of the spirit, you'll reap life everlasting. I don't know about you, but I am believing God for the impossible tonight. The pastor said it. He said it. There's people watching tonight. They're, on, they're watching on the internet. They'll be watching this, this CD of this message on YouTube or on the, on the Harvest Army channel or maybe on the, uh, the, the Word channel or wherever else it may go. Folks, let me just tell you right now, once God anoints the Lord's work, it never stops being anointed. You can watch it 10 years from now and people will still get saved. So don't ever think that supporting the work of God doesn't pay off because praise God, the Lord, he said, if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. And there is a harvest of souls to get in. Woo! Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The bigger they are, Harder they fall. What you talking about, preacher? I said the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Not the harder it is to take them down. See, what the devil's done is told you, every time a giant has ever stood in your path between you and the blessing of God, the devil exalts the giant. The devil tries to make the mountain bigger than it really is. The devil tries to glorify his evil and his power. But listen, it, it doesn't matter how big the devil thinks he is. No matter how much the giants stand in your way, it, there's nothing for the hand of God to remove them. If you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, you can say to any mountain be moved and cast in the sea and it shall be done. Woo! It didn't say, it didn't say, well, if it's a big mountain, you're going to have to pray longer. It didn't say if it was a gigantic obstacle that you would have to pray harder. Just said if you've got a faith of a grain of mustard seed, you could say to any mountain, be moved and cast into the sea. 1 Samuel 17, the Bible said, Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together. And as they gathered, folks, the Bible said the Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together. They pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side. And Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. You see, whatever that is that you've got to beat, and you've got something you've got to beat to make it to heaven. I guarantee you there's a temptation. There's a trial. There's an attack of the devil. There's something that you've got to beat to get to heaven. You might say, well, I'd get saved. I've had people tell me this. I'm ready to get saved if I just got one problem. Always one problem. Say one problem. They're willing to give up everything, but there's always just one issue. If I could get that took care of, when I get that settled, preacher, then I'm going to get saved. Well, if I'm sat around and wait for you to get that settled, you're never coming. Because that, that giant has become too big in your life. That giant has gotten too large. And you've got to the point where it's deceived you and has fooled you and it's a mirage and it's not as big as it really seems to be. But we've allowed the, the molehill to become the mountain. The Bible said that the Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side, the Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath. 
of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. He was about nine foot six. He was huge. He had a helmet of brass upon his head. He was armed with a coat of mail, and it weighed, the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And my Bible had been converted into 166 pounds. He had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. Like that big pole, that big uh, huge pole they would use when they were stretching the thread and making a rug. Big, tall, long, strong, and it had on it a spear's head that weighed 600 shekels, or about 21 pounds. I mean, this was a spear, about like a pole vault with a big, huge, heavy head on that spear. It was, it was gigantic. It, it would probably take two or three good-sized people to deal with it. This man was holding it wearing 166 pounds of armor with a huge spear. He was ready. He was a champion. He was exalted. He was ready to fight. He was well trained. He was the best the devil had. And he was standing between the children of Israel and their miracle. He was standing between them and their freedom. He was standing between them and their victory. He was standing between them and their blessing. What's between you and the blessing of God tonight? What is standing so big? What appears to be so tall? What is it that is so enticing that you can't let go? I'm telling you tonight, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. I see him in the morning as he gets up, walks out there every day. He did it for 40 days, 40 days. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of these chosen ones. That's what he's saying now. Send someone out to fight me. Send somebody to take me on. If you can defeat me, we will serve you. But if I slay though the soldier you send, you all will be in captivity. Let me remind the devil right now, you're messing with the blessing of God. When the devil starts the messing, God starts the blessing. You can't have a victory without an enemy. Oh, hallelujah. Pastor, I don't like to fight. I don't like to get involved. I don't want any conflict. I just want to take my time. And I, You don't want to go to heaven, do you? Because to get to heaven, you're going to have to stomp every demon in hell. In Jesus' name. You think the devil's going to go on vacation and let you slide in about the fourth row of the church and never get your hands dirty? You're wrong. He comes to fight. He came tonight to fight. He's trying to bind the Spirit of God right now. But I'm just stubborn enough to stand in the Holy Ghost with God's people. And get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because the bigger they are. The, the harder, the harder they fall. Five, four. four. Fum, I smell the blood of the chosen ones. Hold it a minute, devil. Did you say you smelled the blood? <laughs> you did. It's not by our might, nor by our power, but by his spirit. 